This time I'm going to talk a little about the spring constant in physics and we'll try to understand it. So I'm using a simulation called Hooke's Law 1.0.22. <laughs> it's from the University of Colorado, I believe. They have a site called FET, P-H-E-T, physics simulations for educators of various kinds. And also just for you to experiment with. So let's take a look. Imagine the goal today is just to understand what the spring constant is. Not to actually use it, but just understand what it is in its simplest possible form and essence. Why does it even exist? Okay, that's the real question. Down below, there's a slider that says spring constant 1 and there's a value of 500 newtons per meter. The n is newtons and the m is meters. So those are the units. Newtons per meter. Now look, I'm going to first reset this value to something small like 100. So I'm resetting the spring constant to 100 newtons per meter. And the question is, what does that actually represent? But there's a slider on the right side, that is the one that allows you to adjust the applied force. In other words, that force allows you to either stretch the spring or compress the spring. I mean, sorry, the spring. That's all you can do with a spring. Either you can stretch it or you can compress it. That's about it. So, to make this work, across the top, there's some additional controls. One says displacement up there. Do you see that? It shows like a little green arrow. You want to make sure that you enable that, okay? So, displacement, enable that, and then also enable values. When you do that, that will add the following. Over here above my head, you're going to see a little vertical bar and then a number, like for example 0.00, .00 meters, assuming you set everything just so. And now what we're going to do is, with these things enabled, we're going to understand what this value of 100 newtons per meter means for the spring constant. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to apply a force to the spring. I'm going to apply the force to the right. So look carefully. I'm going to pull it this way and stop. So this is a force of 100 newtons, and look up here, it gives a displacement of 1 meter. So when we say here in the spring constant that it has a value of 100 newtons per meter, what it means physically is you have to apply a force of 100 newtons to get a stretch of 1 meter. So then it becomes 100 newtons per 1 meter. That's what the spring constant means. This also works the other way. So what I mean is, take a look. First, let's just zero out the applied force so you can restore the balance. So I'm going to put this as zero right here. And then after that, what I'm going to do is apply that same force, but in the opposite direction by compressing the spring. The spring, I keep saying string for some reason. <laughs> so let's actually do that. Take a look. So now you see that there's an applied force of 100 newtons meter, 100 newtons to the left. So in other words, negative 100 newtons. And that also causes a compression of 1 meter in the spring. So again, that confirms the meaning of this quantity, 100 newtons per meter. That's the spring constant. It works both ways, either when you're stretching the spring or you're compressing the spring. Let's take a look at the next bit. So here's a small puzzle. Maybe pause the video and think about it as I talk about it. So let me just zero out the applied force. We need to be able to do that beginning from equilibrium essentially. Since our maximum applied force quantity there on the right side is say 100 newtons, imagine that I set the spring constant at 200 newtons per meter. Okay, about right there. So this is 200 newtons per meter, but our possible maximum force that we can apply is 100 newtons. And the puzzle question is, what's the maximum distance that you can stretch the spring? given that you can apply a maximum force of 100 newtons, but the constant for the spring is 200 newtons per meter. So maybe pause the video, pause the way through it. I'll play some elevator music meanwhile. <laughs> do, 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 do. Okay. <laughs> so let's take a look. What I'm going to do is simply experiment. So again, 200 newtons per meter, spring constant, maximum force I can apply it is 100 newtons, so if I pull this to the right, the maximum displacement there, as you can see, is only half a meter. In other words, we would get that simply from taking the 100 and then dividing by the 200, essentially, that gives a half. Okay, so I've zeroed out my simulation, and let's do this puzzle on my time. So imagine that, again, the maximum force I can apply is 100 newtons. That's all we have there on the slider. And imagine that I change the value of the spring constant from 200 newtons per meter, arbitrarily say, to 1000 newtons per meter. First of all, what it means about the spring is that the spring appears to be much thicker now, as you would expect. For example, like in car struts, right? Those are really thick springs. And the question and the puzzle might be, given that the maximum force I can apply is 100 newtons and the spring constant is 1000 newtons per meter, what would be the maximum displacement that this maximum force of 100 newtons allows me to create in the spring? So maybe pause the video and think about it then. 
okay. <laughs> so let's take a look. As you can imagine, this probably will be around 0.1. Take a look, you see? It's 0.1 of a meter. In other words, 10 centimeters if you like, 0.1 of a meter. And the reason, again, is you basically take that applied force and you divide by the spring constant. So 100 divided by 1,000, if you form that little quantity, you will see that's about 0.1. So in other words, that tells you the maximum distance that the spring will go, given that force. And then the other question might be, naturally enough, what if I did want to actually stretch the spring or compress it by one meter, given that its constant is 1,000 newtons per meter? What should be the maximum force on our slider if I wanted, for example, to recreate the slider with a maximum value on it? Well, in that case, I would have to have a slider with a maximum value of 1,000 newtons. So these are some of the fundamentals around the spring constants. In other words, I hope you understand why it has values like a number, and then there are newtons and tops, and there's a metered unit in the bottom of the spring constant, what that actually means. Okay, that is it for me. Thank you so much for watching. Please leave a like and subscribe. I'll see you in another video.